Steve Stone down on the field. Back in 1963, when John Kennedy was still president, little Jay Johnstone signed his first contract with the California Angels. And Jay, you're a pinch hitter now. You spend a lot of time on the bench. What do you do to relax? Well, it's very hard being a pinch hitter because you have to try and guess with the manager, you know. So I have to do things to keep my mind at ease and keep from going crazy. So I have a lot of fun. Well, looks like right there you're having a lot of fun with your Brock umbrella and the big shoes. But Jim Fry said that he was going to get you a chance to play in the outfield a little bit. That hasn't materialized. How do you keep your sanity? Well, it's hard, but uh, I have to watch the game situations. I know that uh, sooner or later that some of these guys are going to get tired, and I'm going to go in and play either left or right or, or wherever, and uh, I'm waiting for that chance. You know, I spent the first 38 days on the disabled list. It's a little tough to come back and get some timing, but uh, uh, he's using all 25 guys on his team, and the idea is to win, and if it takes 25, that's what, uh, that's what Jim Fry is going to do, so I just have to wait my turn. Every year you swing the bat very well in spring training. Then all of a sudden the season starts, the weather gets cold, so does Jay Johnstone. But it seems like when it heats up, you start swinging the ball well, the bat well again. How come? Well, you know, when you come out of spring training, you're playing about every other day. You're getting some at-bats, you're facing pitching. I went into the season, uh, my first two at-bats, I hit the ball well, I got a hit, then I went 38 days on disable it, and I didn't see any live pitching at all, and then coming back and only getting that one swing, that one crack, it's not like you're facing a pitcher that, uh, that's an average pitcher. We get all the best relievers to face, or we get guys that are throwing good ball, club, good ball games against our team. Well, wait a second here. Now you have a glove. Now there's some on the team who would say that this is false hustle, Jay Johnstone with a glove. But how do you keep your timing in the field? Well, if I'm not using it, it really makes a good planner for those African violets, you know, <laughs> that I could put in my locker and watch them grow with sunlight. But every day I take fly balls and I take infield because I have to be ready for the day that he says, okay, you're playing today. I cannot afford that opportunity to say, okay, I need two, two or three days to get ready. I have to be ready that day. When you first came up, you hit the ball very well. You went into some slumps with the White Sox. But one of the men you credited with helping you hit was Billy DeMars. What did Billy say? What are his philosophies about hitting? Basically, there's certain fundamentals in hitting that you have to follow, and we practice these fundamentals by hitting off the batting tee. We work on the fundamentals by getting them down off the batting tee so that when I went into live pitching, I didn't have to think about what I was doing. I just reacted. So what we do is we work fundamentals on the batting tee. Now when it comes to live pitching, I just look for the ball, and I work on timing. It looks to me like you're a very good fastball hitter. Obviously, the off-speed pitches, as do many of the players on the team, give you a little bit of problem. But do you ever go up there guessing off-speed? There have been times, yes, when I, when I have to, because as uh, last week, I, I got nothing but off-speed pitches from the Phillies and from a few other clubs. And this is when I've got to take the fastball or try and hit the ball the other way. We just had Ron Hassey in the middle of the screen. and tell Cleveland player. You know, that's how things are in Cleveland. <laughs> tell me one more thing. You're one of the most popular players on the ball club. And I know that you enjoy the fans. Do you feel that the players have a little bit of a responsibility to the fans? Well, the fans are the people that come out and root and cheer us on. And without the fans, we ball players wouldn't be on the field. And I think that uh, each player realizes, even though sometimes uh, it may seem to the fans that the, the players are, are aloof and sometimes they don't want to sign autographs, but we as the players realize that, that we need the fans to support the game of baseball because it is the greatest game. Thank you, Jay. Hang in there. I hope to see you in the Listen, outfield pretty some soon. Listen, African violets in the clubhouse <laughs> if you really need them. We'll, we'll plant them. Take care of yourself. We're going to be back with Vince and his guest, Dave Owen, after this timeout. Dave Owen has to spend an awful lot of time on the bench, but every once in a while he gets a chance to start or he'll come into a ball game late. Dave, the other night at Pittsburgh, you made an absolutely spectacular play. You remember, don't you? Yeah, I do, Vince. Thank you. Uh, it was just uh, the infield was in. Uh, Don Robinson was hitting, and uh, we were trying to cut the run down at the plate, and he hit a high chopper over our, over my head, and I just uh, fortunately made the play. I think you wound up behind second base, had to make the throw off balance, and was right on target. Good arm, good reflexes. Well, thank you. Uh, Leon Durham made a heck of a play on the other end there, making a good stretch for me, so we, uh, I was glad I made the play. One of the problems, Dave, has to be, especially when you're on the road, getting enough batting practice. How do you uh, how do you get that in? Well, batting practice is always a main concern. Fortunately, John Vukovic is always there if uh, we need extra hitting, and uh, on the road's no exception. You know, you just tell Vuk you need some extra hitting, and if you can't get on the field, uh, there's always a cage, and we go to the cage and hit. When did the Cubs first sign you? I signed in 79. Uh, Bill Cap signed me. Bill Cap. 
out of uh, University of Texas Arlington. $150,000 bonus, huh? Uh, I wish. <laughs> Not quite that much. <laughs> did you get a bonus? Yeah, I did sign for a bonus, and uh, at that time, to me, you know, it was, it wasn't a big, the big bonus wasn't a big situation. It was just uh, fulfilling a dream that I'd always had to play a professional baseball, and that gave me a chance, and that's what I wanted to do. Well, let me tell you, you do an excellent job every time you get in there, and that means you got to do a lot of work to keep yourself ready to get into a game at any time. Well, I, I take pride in, in, in doing my work before a game. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to play every day. You can still do your work, uh, take your ground balls, take your extra hitting, and Ruben Amaro, uh, Don Zimmer, Book, they're always there when you need them, and, and you can work them out as much as you can work out. So. All right. Dave, thank you very, very much, and good luck to you, buddy. Thank you, Vince. Okay. Steve Stone's going to be back in a moment with a look at today's pitchers. Big screen valor, above and beyond the call of duty, uncountable acts of courage. I'm Tom Bosley. Join me for fearless flashes from the past, plus a new brand of bravery from a character called Buckaroo Banzai. On and off camera, it's Hollywood Heroes. Saturday night at 6 on Channel 9. On the mound for St. Louis, John Stuper. Look at those numbers. They're not going to impress you, but when Stuper threw against the Cubs in St. Louis, he threw seven innings, gave up only two runs. He threw the ball very well. He's got a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, and he can be tough at times. But look at the sixth inning. He's had some trouble from that point on. Rick Russell is throwing for the Cubs today. Rick has had some problems in two out of his last three games. His control hasn't been what he'd like. He's been missing with the breaking ball. He's going to try to rectify that today. The key to the game today is Daryl Porter for St. Louis. Lonnie Smith isn't playing today, and George Hendrick isn't playing. That leaves the Cardinals without a lot of power. Darrell has six home runs and 28 RBIs. He's the most powerful member of the Cardinals, and he's hitting in the number four spot. And something for you to watch today, Mark Salas in left field. He's just called up from the minor leagues. He's got a lot of power. He's a left-hand hitter. He's the kid who's hitting 1,000. He's one for one. Stay tuned for baseball. Guests on Leadoff Man receive this Zenith ACDC portable TV that you can use anywhere, auto, beach, or camping. Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. Leadoff Man was brought to you by Heinz Lumber. Your money goes further when you go to Heinz. Leadoff Man is a WGN television sports presentation. Welcome to Mel's Diner. Last chance for gas, water, and tow mine. And for great comedy. Yeah! Comedy served funny side up on Alice. Alice, weeknights at 6 on Channel 9. The sun is shining at Wrigley Field in Chicago, and it's time for Major League Baseball as the Cubs entertain the St. Louis Cardinals. Participating advertisers in Cubs baseball are Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Your neighborhood True Value hardware stores. Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1984. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. Union 76 and your neighborhood Union 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit the spirit of 76. Canon, the official 35 millimeter camera of the 1984 Olympics. United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Zenith, 
see all the close-up action on the smart set by Zenith. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. The Yellow Pages. It's the small investment that keeps your big investments paying off. And your Chicagoland McDonald's restaurants, where you can get all your favorite tastes in just one place. McDonald's. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. again everybody with Steve Stone this is Harry Carey at Wrigley Field where the Chicago Cubs open a three-game series against the St. Louis Cardinals the Cubs are looking ahead to the New York Mets who are two and a half games in front of them but the St. Louis Cardinals are looking ahead to the Chicago Cubs for two and a half games ahead of them it'll be John Stuper pitching to the Redbirds today and Rick Rushell for the Chicago Cubs now you just uh, saw that weather warning we had. We've had a lot of rain here in Chicago, but it hasn't dimmed the enthusiasm of this crowd here. We're gonna have big crowds throughout the uh, series here with the St. Louis Cardinals. Lamar Vernon, the, who's the ticket sale director, he's in charge of all ticket sales for the Chicago Cubs, tells me though that there are seats available for every game. So don't let these frightening uh, rumors about sellouts keep you away. While um, many seats are sold out, like box seats and maybe reserve seats, there are always seats available when the gates open here at Wrigley Field. The weatherman has cooperated uh, perfectly. He predicted the early in the morning that the skies would clear by noon, and I heard Wally Phillips himself, not exactly a weather prognosticator, but chatting with uh, a couple of them on uh, WGN this morning. And boy, they called it uh, right on the button. The skies are clear as the Cubs prepare to take the field. The um, standings find the Mets a half a game ahead of the Phillies, and the Phillies open a series at Pittsburgh where the Cubs just left. We want to welcome the balance of our network here with us now as they've just joined us. The pitchers getting ready for today's game are Rick Russell in the left field corner, John Stuper in the right hand corner. Now George Hendrick and Lonnie Smith are not going to be in the starting lineup, but don't bet that they won't be in there before this game is over. Well, here's a uh, Christina Ashley pass along this note. Jody and Bill Buckner well, our parents again of a baby girl last night now that's not Christina Ashley that's what they have named her Christina Ashley Buckner so congratulations are in order to Bill Buckner and his lovely wife Jody on the birth of their little daughter I believe that's their second daughter Christina Ashley Buckner the Cubs will be uh, taking the field here in just a moment. The series continues with a game starting at 12.50 tomorrow, the unusual starting time because uh, it will be televised by NBC, so Channel 9 will be preempted as usually is the case on Saturdays. And then Sunday we'll be back at the regular time of 1.20 with the telecast here on Channel 9. 
And then Monday, the Pittsburgh Pirates will be here. And it'll be True Value Hardware Day with Pat Summerall serving as MC as all the high school students in the Chicago area are honored. You know, the Cardinals have beaten the Cubs six out of nine. But almost every game between these two clubs has been a rip snorter. Now, the Cubs, maybe this is just what they need, the appearance of the Cardinals to add the spark that's been missing in the last few days. One of the most paradoxical things in sports is what's happened to the Cubs. There isn't a baseball fan who won't tell you that the Cubs are immeasurably improved in the important department of pitching by their recent trades, yet they've lost six out of seven since those trades. Now our national anthem. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gay. That beautiful rendition of our national anthem. We'll be back now with a ball game in a moment. <laughs> Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Here are the lineups for today's game. Before we give you that, though, I'd be remiss indeed if I didn't mention the lovely young lady who sang our national anthem. She's Charlotte Leistrom, a member of the Chicago band Contender. Here are the lineup for the Cardinals, her at second base, Van Slyke at third base, McGee in center field, Porter the catcher, Mike Jorgensen at first base, a rookie, Mark Salas in uh, left field, David Green at first base, Ozzy Smith at Chardon. Here's the first pitch to Tommy Her and his low and outside, and John Stuper is the pitcher. He's one, two, lost four. Green is playing right field with Jorgensen at first base. One ball, no strikes. Line drive, base hit in the center field. Her opens the ball game for the Cardinals, and that brings a roar from the Redbird fans, and the crowd is evenly divided here today. Before the game, Scott Sanderson threw in the bullpen. It's very encouraging because he threw all of his pitches and threw very well. And Dick Ruthven also has thrown well in the bullpen. So this becomes a very important outing for Rick Russell. There's going to have to be some roster moves made when both of those guys come back because they'll both be used in the starting rotation. And right now, Rick Russell seems to be one of the guys who are being considered for perhaps being moved out of that rotation. Well, he, uh, when he has pitched well, he has pitched very, very well. Other times, they just... Bomb him. Her drilled a single to center. Here now is Andy Van Slyke. Fastball sinks low, and Jody Davis came out of the chute ready to fire. Tommy Her let off with a line single to center. Andy Van Slyke, a handsome young man, very versatile, plays a number of different positions. Tommy Her is back. Van Slyke has found a home at third base. Whitey Herzog said one of the reasons why they traded Ken Obergefell was to make room for this fellow. He's got a lot of potential. Again, they throw over there. Well, this is Rockford, Illinois Day. Channel number 17, WTVO, has a big group here. Over 100.
headed by Kim Lee Pack, the sports director. One ball, no strike. All too low. Come on, Rick. Van Slyke was playing an exceptional first base when David Green went on the disabled list, and Whitey Herzog said it's kind of a shame they had to move him off there. But his future is at third, where he can provide some power and knock in some runs. Here's the strike call, and the runner at first, Tommy Herr, Herr, made a start as if to break for second. And Jody Davis came out of that shoot again, ready to fire. Van Slyke. Another left-hand hitter. Boy, they got a flock of them in their lineup. They throw over there and he's back. Her doesn't run quite as well as he used to. He's had three knee operations, and the footing is a little bit heavy. So if the Cardinals decide to run, look for it to be the hit and run, and Van Slyke will be trying to pull it in the hole. Here's the pitch now. Instead over the first, the runner back. Oh, close play. The first six men in the Cardinal lineup are left-handed hitters. Russell steps back off the mound and then fires to first, almost nipping her. The call by Doug Harvey. Her edging off the bag. He doesn't run as good as he used to. There he goes, a pitch foul. And the count evens up two balls, two strikes. And her returns. Nice crowd on him. Her long lead. Time is called. Two balls, two strikes. Her has had four stolen bases, been thrown out four times also. Two two pitch. Just missed outside. This will be an opportunity to strike him out and throw him out. If Russell can throw strike three to Van Slyke, undoubtedly her will be off with the pitch. Three balls, two strikes. They throw over to first, the runner back again. Boy, this is a key pitch here because they'd have a big inning going if he gets a hit. Three, two pitch. There he goes. The pitch swung, fouled out of play. Two out of the last three times out, Russell's given up seven earned runs. And he's been struggling with his control. Three and two is not his game plan. If he gets too many pitches on this count, he's going to be in trouble. Three, two delivery. There goes the runner swung on a high fly ball. Matthews is there to make the cut. Van Slag flies to Matthews in left center. Well, Russell had enough on his fastball to keep Van Slyke from being able to pull it. Here's Willie McGee hitting 252 for the year with one homer and 18 RBI. McGee is hit well over 300 against the Cubs. A delightfully cool day. 12.50 game time tomorrow. Her a big lead. And Russell's very conscious of them. One on, one out. There's a pitch a little bit low on outside. You know, the... Even the Cubs' greatest detractors would, that, would admit to you that the Cub, the team would seem to be immeasurably improved with the three new pitchers. Here's the pitch. A little bit outside. Ball, too. And it just goes to show you what a great paradox baseball truly is because after being improved, the Cubs went out and lost six out of the next seven. 
The delivery, bouncing ball, tough play. Force out at second. Good thing they had that man at first base. Her, because McGee could never have been thrown out. Force out. McGee gets this ball off the end of the bat. Doesn't get much in it. Her doesn't even bother sliding at second. No chance for the double play. McGee gets down the line in a hurry. So as her streak for a second, Larry Bullock got him. <laughs> Two out here is Darrell Porter, the catcher. Hitting 263, six homers. Fastball at the knee, hey. Popped that one in there pretty well. Crowd well divided between Cardinal fans and Cub fans. The Cardinals have been shut out 10 times this year. The only club in baseball to be shut out more is the New York Yankees. That offense has been down most of the year. The power department way down. There's the runner back. Two men are out. There goes the runner McGee to peg. Hey, that got him. Even though it went down a one hop, Jody Davis gunned it so. Larry Boa making the good tag. Nice play by Boa. The grass is a little bit wet, and the ball actually accelerates after it hits the grass. Watch the foot of McGee as it slides right into the glove of Boa. Good hands by Larry. <laughs> You know, that's what they usually do on the aspen turf. They bounce the ball in there. This time, Jody did it on the wet grass and had the same effect. And we go into the bottom of the first no score. <laughs> that, this bud's for me, huh? Nice shot, Arnie. You know how to make a guy thirsty, I'll say that. The Cub lineup is as follows as you get a panoramic view of leading right into Wrigley Field. Dernier leading off in center field, Sandberg at second, Matthews in left, Durham at first, Moreland in right, Davis the catcher, Say at third, Boa at sharp, Rushel the pitcher. Bobby Dernier hitting 311 with one homer, 14 RBI. There's a strike in there. There's a high pop foul out of play. Despite the fact that John Stuper throws a fastball timed at upwards of 90 miles an hour, somewhere along the line, he's lost his strikeout pitch. He's walked 17, only struck out 18 this year. But the hit to innings pitch ratio tells the tale. 62 hits to 52 and two thirds innings pitch. That's at least 10 base runners a game without counting walks and errors. So he's had his problems as that five plus earned run average would indicate. Oh and to the count on Bobby Dernier. There's a hit in the right field. Dernier hits an 0 and two pitch sharply to right. And the Cubs. Get away to a good start. And get ready now. When Dernier gets on, the ball game starts. Dernier trying for his 27th stolen base. He's getting close to a Cubs record. Ryan Sandberg batting 316. Pitch a little bit high. Seven homers, 38 runs batted in. And Steve Sachs still leads in the balloting for the second baseman. One ball, no strikes. There's a fastball in there. The count is evened up. Tommy Herr is very close to second base. He's playing Sandberg like a right-handed pull hitter, leaving him a lot of room on the right side if he decides to go that way. Take a look at how close Herr is to second. There's a line drive, a deep left field going against the wall. Here's Dernier around the third base. He's going to be held up. Ryan Sandberg doubled over Mark Salas' head. And the Cubs are off and roaring. 
Salas caught most of this here. Now he gets frozen on this ball. He just stands there and the ball goes over his head. He plays it poorly, but he's not to blame. He's playing out of position. Sandberg records a double. Nobody out here in the first inning. Come on, let's go get some runs now. Boy, we've been doing this in the first two innings almost in every ball game and nothing happens. Now, now our third, fourth, and fifth place hitters got to start producing. And the Sarge had to cut it a curveball and he missed it. I think he was trying to hit the right field and no wonder. Look at all the room they give him out there. Here's the pitch. Ground ball. Deep shot. Only play. First base. A run scores. One to nothing in favor of the cup. An RBI is 32nd. But that's how we've been scoring runs with opportunities. A real big inning. No play for Ozzie as he moves toward the hole. He's got to throw to first base. There you can see it get by Van Slyke. The search continues to knock in some runs. That RBI total is climbing steadily. Now here is Durham. First pitch a little bit low and inside. One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Bottom of the first inning. Ryan Sandberg, the runner at second base, he had a hole because the ball was hit in front of him. He didn't want to run into a sure out of third. The pitch. It's a little bit high. Durham is hitting 355 against Cardinal pitching. Overall, he's hitting 306. 12 homers, 51 RBI. Fastball at the knees, a strike call. Mike Orloff and his sons are here. See the series? Two balls and a strike. Swung, anyway. And the count evens up. Two balls, two strikes. Keith Moreland on deck. John Stuper getting ready. 2-2 two -two pitch. Ooh, barely missed. Ball three. He had his fastball by Durham, but fortunately was a little bit inside. 3-2 pitch. No particular wind advantage today. A wild pitch on ball four. The catcher can't find the ball. And here goes Sandberg now will stop and go back to third base. Had the bull ran to first base, he would have yeah. been on second base. On. Watch Daryl Porter. He can't locate the ball. He flounders around, and Leon is just trotting. You can see him in the right corner of your screen. Now, the only play that Porter has is to throw the ball to home plate because he doesn't know what Durham is doing. The bull might have wound up at second base, but is content to stay at first. So those runners at first and third. Here's Keith Moreland. He's hitting only 179 against the Cardinals pitching this year. 273 all told. Third ball a little bit high. Ball one. Runners first and third. The infield playing back. Hal Lanier has said that Moreland and Davis hit almost similar. They take the ball the other way. They can drive the ball if it's inside. He said they must be best friends. And <laughs> they're very close. Now the pitch. Low and outside. Our lights are blown out here. It's, it's really dark. Two balls, no strikes. Runners at first and third. One to nothing. Cubs are out in front. And the Cardinal bullpen is busy early. Right Take a look at Jeff Lotti. Strong, and he fouled it back. He was sitting on a fastball, got it. Had a good cut, but fouled it back. Lonnie, of the three games the Cardinals have beaten the Cubs out of nine played, I think Lonnie's won two of them. He has thrown very well in middle relief. Every time he's come in, he's shown good stuff. There's a little tap to the third baseman in foul territory. Two balls, two strikes. Keith Moreland, the hitter. We had runners at second and third with nobody out. 
Our third place hitter grounded out one run score. Our fourth place hitter walked. On a wild pitch that enables Sandberg to go to third. Now our fifth place hitter's up there with runners at first and third, only one out. Two balls, two strikes. There's a long drive way back. It might be. It could be. It is. Holy cow. A three-run homer for Moreland. And the Cubs are leading four to nothing. Boy, did he ever cream that one. Home run number five, RBI's number 19, 20, and 21 for the Redhead. Since coming into the starting lineup, Keith Moreland is starting to hit the ball with authority. That's a way to get production from the middle of your lineup. A three-run homer for Keith Moreland. Here's Jody Davis now. One ball, no strikes. That cleared everything, went out onto the street. A ball and a strike on Jody Davis. The Cubs have taken the lead four to nothing. Ron Say waiting on deck. A dreary day all of a sudden. The sun is no longer shining. There's a little tap back to the mound. He swung at a terrible pitch over his head. Let's take a look at that pitch, Arnie. The only place the sun is shining is in the Cub dugout. Let's take another look at the home run. Stuper gets a breaking ball right over the inside part of the plate. Mark Salas runs out of room. And there you see the ball and three runs score for the Cubs. For that home run, True Value Hardware will happily donate $100 to Cubs Care and the Northwest Memorial Hospital in the fight against cancer. Moreland's homer landed halfway up in the left field bleacher. Here's Ronnie Say hitting 237. Pop it up. On the infield, Tommy Herr makes the catch to retire the side. Four runs, three hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of one, the Cubs four, the Cardinals nothing. Harry Carey and Steve Stone back at Wrigley Field. Here's Darrell Porter leading off the second inning. He's hitting 263. Takes a fastball low. Two balls, no strike. Well, Lou Malnati here with a group. Now, so many restaurant tours do on these late starting games. Here's the pitch. Foul out of play. And wherever Lou Malnati has a group, you know the pizza cannot be far behind. <laughs> Nor the ice cold Budweiser beer. With a low outside. Another big bus load from Burgoff's restaurant is here. Jimmy Janik usually brings groups out in his in his uh, automobile, his limousine. Here's a bouncing ball. Sandberg goes the first easy out. I talked with Whitey Herzog before the game, and I said we had a little bit of a problem in Pittsburgh. The team didn't play very well, and he said, well, don't worry. We're in town. You guys play us like you're the 27 Yankees. We bring out the best in you for some reason. Well, so far, he's turned out to be a prophet. The Cubs jumped right on St. Louis early. Here's Mike Jorgensen, veteran first baseman. They traded Oberfeld, their third baseman, to Atlanta. For Daly, a pitcher, and Mike Jorgensen, a handy man to have around. Two balls, no strikes. And there you take a look at Bruce Suter. Hopefully he'll stay out of this one. Now the pitch. High pump foul back, out of play. Jorgensen has pretty good numbers against Rick Russell lifetime. That's one of the things that Whitey Herzog looked at when he decided to give George Hendrick the day off. Jorgensen a fine glove man at first base and a good left-hand hitter, especially against right-handed pitching. Here's Jorgensen taking the pitch a little wide. Three balls and a strike. 
Mark Salas, the 23-year-old rookie, is on deck. Now the pitch. Ball, he walked it. That's what you don't want to do when you have a four-run lead is walk them. They hit their way on you, don't mind. Salas was signed by the St. Louis organization 1979 where he went to Johnson City. He didn't hit many home runs until last year. He changed his stroke, hit 20 home runs at Arkansas in double-A, hit 304. Look at that radically wide open stance. There's the pitch swung on. Fly ball should be caught. Dernier is there. You know what that means. It is caught. Two men are down. And here is David Green. Playing right field today, hitting 243 for the year. He beat Montreal the other day with a two-run homer in the ninth inning. There is a tornado uh, warning for the Chicago area, and the Channel 9 will bring you information. Just watch your screen as you watch the ball game and you'll be kept up to date. Here's the pitch and Green takes it outside. Suzanne Webb from South Haven, Michigan watching the game. There's a bouncing ball, ball to his right. Can't feel the ball. It'll be, it'll be a hit. This is a play that Larry should have made. The ball was right in the middle of his glove and he dropped it. He was going into the hole. Green is credited with a base hit. Take a look at it again. A tough play, but Larry would have had to force out at second base. Now that gives him two men on, and here's Ozzie Smith, the shortstop. Hitting two, 39. Fastball in there for a strike off. He has one homer, two, uh, 22 RBIs, a tough little cookie. Matthews is playing him pretty deep in left field. He doesn't have power that way, especially left-handed. Now the pitch swung on. We ought to be out of the inning. Here's Ruscio covering, and Durham feeds it to him for the third out. From Durham to Russell, and Ozzy Smith bounces out. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. We go into the bottom of the second, four to nothing in favor of the cup. His mind is on his mission. His body is ready for action. And his charm is irresistible. Harrison Ford. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Rated PG. Now showing. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Larry Boa will lead it off, hitting 243, the first pitch. High ball one. Skies have darkened. It's misty, hazy here at Wrigley Field. Here's a strike call. And the count evens up at a ball on the strike. A high pop fly. Should be caught, and it is. Salas catches it easily. Well, there's a family here, Lapari family from Honolulu. The five-year-old son is watching his first Major League Baseball game. I talked to Whitey Herzog, and I said, you're going to have quite a three-game series here as far as the crowd's concerned. He said, yeah, but if we have the same type of crowds the next time we're in, you're going to have something going because that's the 28th, 29th, and 30th of September. The last series of the year, the Cardinals are in Chicago. One out, nobody on. Russia, a pretty good hitting pitcher up there. Russia looking for his fourth victory of the year. Both these fellows with high earned run averages should be a big run game. There's Whitey Herzog. Next to him is uh, Red Shandies. 
There's a drive. Deep center will be caught. Willie McGee. Russell got good wood on that ball, but straight away center. Here's Bobby Dernier now. He started it all with a two-strike single to right. He was 0-2. Cub fans are here from Omaha. And Cardinal fans are here from Omaha. Bobby Dernier takes a pitch a little bit low. That evens the count. Four to nothing, the Cubs are leading. There's a little tap. Foul. One and two, the count. Bobby Dernier waiting. Ground ball to the second baseman. Tommy Hur throws him out. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of two innings, the Cubs four. And the Cardinals nothing. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. John Stuper, the pitcher, is leading it off. Two balls, no strikes to count on him. The delivery by Russo. Right down the middle of the knees, a strike is called. When Russell gets in a groove, he just stands on the mound and keeps firing the ball. Right now, he looks like he is in that groove. There's a pitch fouled off, and it's two and two. Mark Daniel from Flores in Missouri, which is suburban St. Louis, up here to see the game. Two balls, two strikes. Line smash, Stenberg knocks it down, picks it up, throws the first of the up. Super hit that ball right on the butt. That shows you the importance of staying right in front of the ball and keeping the ball in front of you. It's a rocket right at Sandberg, but watch what he does. He stays in front of it, blocks it with his hands and his chest, knows he has plenty of time with a slow running pitcher going down the line and throws Stuper out easily. There's Tommy Herr. He started the ball game with a single. One out, nobody on. It's getting dark. The pitch swings and he fouls it out of play. A group here from Kenosha, Wisconsin. And the Bob Swan family from Vincennes, Indiana. Taking in the ball game while they vacation in Chicago. Owen won the count. A little bit outside. Dave LaPointe, who is having some arm problems, has experienced tenderness in that left shoulder, and he's been inactive. Tells me that at the hotel, it's packed with St. Louis fans. It said it'll be a crowded weekend, and just like the Cubs do when the Cubs play down in St. Louis, the fans follow the Cardinals. There's the ball buttoned nicely. He's going to beat it out, I think. No, they got a nice play by Russia. Tommy Herr doesn't run like he used to. Rick is a good athlete, and he comes and gets the ball in a hurry. Herr takes a while getting down the line, but Russell makes a good underhand throw and throws out Herr by plenty. Watch it again. He doesn't have time to come up, but he fires over there. It's not even that close at first. He's a deceiving athlete, Russell. He runs... Very well. There's a line drive foul off the bat of Andy Van Slyke. Two men are out. Nobody on. Four to nothing. The Cubs are out in front. Van Slyke has had a tough time at third base. He's made a couple of throwing errors. There's a few people over in the St. Louis bench that feel that perhaps it's affecting his hitting a little bit. He's had to adjust to a new position. There's a pitch a little bit inside. A ball and a strike. Paul Porter of Effingham, one of my celebrating his 12th birthday here today. Strike a good fastball. And Russell is out in front of him, one and two. Two men out, nobody on. Now 
Now the big right-hander delivers. Just missed with a breaking ball. They're here from Beaverton, Oregon, and from Jacksonville, Florida. There's a dry watch Dernier now. Makes the catch three by the side. One, two, three, nothing across. We go into the bottom of the third. Cubs four, St. Louis nothing. Sandberg will lead it off here in the bottom of the third. He doubled his set up that first inning. Put runners at second and third with nobody out. A ball and a strike. There's a good look at John Stuper. Pitch a loud side. There's a tornado warning in effect until 420 for DuPage, Northern Keene, and Northwestern Cook County. There's another hit for Sandberg. Tommy Herr leaped high. Got his fingertips on a ball, but couldn't hold it. And Sandberg, who got four hits last night, continues to stay red hot with his second of the day. Had Herb been about an inch taller, he would have pulled that one down as it just barely tipped off the top of his glove. And now Daryl Porter wants to have a word with John Stuper, and he's telling him about the possibility of the hit and run. Gary Matthews drove in a run with an infield out his first time at bat. Sandberg with six out of his last seven. Bottom of the third, run around at first base. The pitch, Matthews had a cut, and he missed. Boy, uh, Frank Maloney and Bob Farrell, Bob Farrell being in charge of group sales. There, he's going to bunt, and he missed it. 107 groups here today covering 5,225 people. Oh, and two the count. All is high. He fouls it out of play. Boy, it looks like it's going to pour again. Nobody out, Sandberg, the runner at first. The Cubs are out in front, four to nothing. Stuper fires over there. Cheryl Lyle is here. Throw over the first. The pit. High. John Stuper struggling. He's been struggling all year. He's won two. He's lost four. Earn run average 5.30. This is a pretty good pitch to run on for Sandberg if he thinks he can get a jump. There he goes. The pitch is way low and outside. No play. Sandberg steals his 10th base of the year. For the 2-2 count, Stuper went to the breaking ball and threw Porter almost an impossible pitch to throw anybody out on. There you see it. He can't even get the throw up, and Sandberg steals it easily. There's a pitch down. Gary Matthews lifts a high fly ball to Willie McGee. He's got it. Sandberg will have to hold. Look at that arm by McGee. The little guy can really fire the ball. One out. Here's Durham. Walked his first time at back. And scored along with Sandberg ahead of Keith Moreland, who homered high into the left field bleacher. There's a fair ball down the first baseline. And Jorgensen fields it easily, steps on the back. Two gone, here's Moreland again, as Sandberg advances to third. Last year, Stuper was 12 and 11 with a 368 earned run average. Had a pretty good year for St. Louis. But when he went to spring training, he had a bad shoulder. Effectively, he didn't have any spring training at all. He was left back when the Cardinals went to St. Louis, and then Whitey Herzog brought him back up here, gave him a chance to throw in relief a couple of times, and put him in the starting rotation. 
and he's been a mystery for Whitey Herzog. Herzog said he'll go along some days and look terrific, and all of a sudden, about the sixth inning, he just gets pounded. Super says it's not his endurance, his arm feels good, and there's really no explanation for the sixth inning miseries. Here's Moreland, the pitch is a little bit low on outside. One ball, no strikes. Four to nothing in favor of the cup. High ball two. Jody Davis on deck. It's dark, it's misty. There's a good fastball at the knee. And the count, two balls and a strike. Moreland hit a hanging high curveball his first time for the three-run homer. There's a drive in the left field, and it is going to be caught. Mark Salas got a good jump. Moreland hit the ball very hard. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Milo will be joining Steve here in a moment. This is Harry Carey at Wrigley Field. At the end of three, it's the Cubs leading the Cardinals four to nothing. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Pepsi-Cola General Bottlers. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. All right, we go to the fourth. Willie McGee leading it off. Goes out to the first pitch and fouls it up to the left side. And as we come into the fourth inning, as always, Milo Hamilton to join Steve Stone. Moreland had a big blow to really make Russell feel a little easier out there. And uh, you can tell it now. He had a little trouble at first, but looks like maybe now he's in the groove. Well, I'm glad that the Cubs have four runs on the board because it's getting a little difficult to see. The hitters can't pick up the rotation on the breaking ball because it's dark. It's a difficult time to put a lot of runs on the board. And a strike to Willie McGee, and it's one and two. McGee was safe on a fielder's choice in the first inning and was caught stealing on a real great effort by Jody Davis. There's a fly ball down the right side. It'll drop. It might head down toward the track. Moreland gets it and will keep McGee from stretching an extra 90. He is in standing with a double. A leadoff double in the fourth inning for Willie McGee. Russell hung the breaking ball. Jody wants it on the ground. You can see where his glove is. But Rick gets it up a little bit, and Willie McGee, his fifth double of the year, drives it in the right field corner. Moreland made a nice play cutting the ball off. That would have been three bases. And see how he gets out there quickly, backhands it, and then whirls. And down by four, they weren't going to gamble. There's another base hit, this one by Porter in the right center. They'll be on the board with two straight hits. And it's a four to one game. So Porter stepped right up there, didn't hesitate at all. Bang! Between Sandberg and the second base bag. Porter is really the only legitimate power hitter and RBI man that the Cardinals have in the order today. And hitting number four, he's a threat. He got up with a man in scoring position and knocked in run number 29. Here is Mike Jorgensen, newly acquired from Atlanta. He was in the Oberkfell deal. There's a tapper up the first base side. Rushel right there. Flips it to Durham. On the play, Porter moves to second. Rushel showing again. Not as tough a chance here, but he is a sure-handed fielding pitcher. Take a look at the stance of Mark Salas. For those of you who watch American League games, it's very much reminiscent of a left-handed Brian Downing. It's a severely open stance. Then when the pitcher delivers the ball, he closes up and strides right at him. He's been DHing for Louisville in their farm system. And there's a line drive single in the center field. Porter is going to be waved, and the throw is going to be off target. And on the play, the runner goes to second base. All of a sudden, the four-run lead is a two-run lead. Very bad throw by Bob Dernier. It's well off target. He's got a good shot at Darrell Porter. Darrell doesn't run well, and Dernier gets to the ball in a hurry. But watch what happens. He pulls the throw over to the first base side. There's Darrell with a big wide turn. That would have cost him an out at home plate, but now Jody can't do anything with it. And the real damage of the throw is that it couldn't be cut off, and Salas winds up also in scoring position. And here is David Green had a base hit in the second inning. 
So the Cardinals all of a sudden with three hits in the inning have come within two. It's a four to two game Cubs. Salas at second base. Strike to Green. Actually now the Cardinals have out hit the Cubs. Five to four. Moreland's three run homer the difference right now four to two Cubs. One ball, one strike. Cardinals have their bullpen busy just in case they decide to pinch hit for John Stuper. Jeff Lottie was throwing before, and it looks like he's up one more time. Boy, he's been effective lately. Pitched very well against the Cubs in St. Louis. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Just tight above the knees. Two pitches in a row that were borderline. And Lottie is in the Cardinal bullpen. David Green, freshly back from rehabilitation. Two balls, one strike. Tap foul rolling back this way, and it's two and two. Green is an awfully strong hitter, but thus far in his career, he's really just shown power to right and right center. He hasn't really learned to consistently turn on the ball yet. He's a very strong young man at 6'3", 215 pounds. Eventually, he will learn to be a legitimate power hitter. He looks like he could be a 20 home run man someday in the major league. All right, with a 2-2 two -two count and a runner at second and only one out. Russell checks that runner, checks him again. Oh, he gave him a different look and got him. Good sidearm curveball and a little bit off of it, completely fooling David Green, who was looking for something hard. Russell pulls the string and watch David Green. This is Ozzie Smith. Bounced at the Durham, first time up. And there's a bouncer past the mound and into center. Rushel got a little fingertip on it, but couldn't field it. And another run is in, and it's a one-run game. RBI 23 for Ozzie Smith, which is a lot for a number eight hitter. Rushel almost kept this ball in the infield, but then it trickles out into center field. Salas scores from second base. And this one's tightened up considerably. Four-run lead is all but gone. This is Steve Braun. And right here, let's pause quickly for station identification. This is WGN Television, Channel 9, Chicago. A ball. Rich Bordy is going to work in the Cub bullpen, so both bullpens are busy, and there's Bordy. Steve Braun, B-R-A-U-N. Good pinch hitter. That's a strike. Braun for the year hitting 244, no homers and four runs batted in. As a pinch hitter, he's six for 27 with two RBIs. Good contact man. Stretch by Russell. And the pitch is a ball. Braun against the Cubs this year is 1-4-7. Two balls and a strike. Started to go after it, did in fact. And it is two and two. So Russell's had a rocky inning and it's not over yet. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Outside, three and two. Rick's been having a little of the same trouble that's plagued him the last couple of times. Trying to work that outside corner, especially the left-hand hitters, and usually with some sinkers out there for strikes, but he just isn't getting them today. Runner going, strike, call, the inning is over. Braun caught looking. Two strikeouts in the inning and in the game for Russell. So it's finally over in the inning as they pick up three runs on two four hits, no errors, one man left, and now it's an entirely different looking score. Cubs four, Cardinals three. The new pitcher is Jeff Lottie. He's a right-hander, as you can see, and Jody leading off the inning with a one-ball, no-strike count. As soon as we can here, we'll check in on his figures. There you see them. But 
run down him a little and uh, give a little hint as to what this guy does because when we saw him in St. Louis, he was looking good. Well, he's been busy. This is his 25th appearance. He's only given up 25 hits in 36 innings. He throws a good, hard, sinking fastball. That's a strike. He's been consistently good against us, getting everything over the plate, but more important, keeping everything down. He throws that fastball consistently thigh high. Jody Davis with a 2-1 count. Ball, and it's 3-1. Jody went after a very high pitch from Stu for the first time up. In fact, it might have been the second limb on that tree. And he just tapped it to then the pitcher Stuper. There's a bouncer, third, Van Slyke in, convenient hop, way high, and then the first baseman came down. Jody wasn't so sure. Doug Harvey, the crew chief, thumbed him out. We've been telling you that Van Slyke has had some problems throwing the ball over there. He's made a couple of errors in the last few games. Now you can see it. He hasn't really got his timing yet. He's been shifted all over the field. Jorgensen goes way up in the air and looks like Jody might have beat him to the bag. Doug Harvey says no. And when you move to a new position like anything else, there's an adjustment period and Van Slyke is finding that out at third. Here's Ron Say. Fly ball, center, McGee on, still on, makes the play. So it's two away and you're in the fourth with the Cubs batting leading by a run. It'll bring up Larry Boa. The WGN softball stars are going to be playing the 24th Police District softball team this Sunday night, the 24th at 7.30 at Phelan Stadium. Everybody knows where that is. It's Devon and Kedzie. That's a ball. Proceeds of the game go to the care and education of the children at the Misericordia home in Rogers Park. Donation only a dollar. Hey, where can you have that much fun and only spend a buck? Bouncer second, big hop her. Throws, three up, three down for Lottie. We have played through four. Cubs in front by a run. Tommy Herr will lead it off in the fifth inning. He's one for two. Tried to bunt his way on in the third, and Russell made a really fine play to throw him out. Fouled off up to the left. Boy, he, they're taking some cuts at Russell, aren't they? Well, they're looking for that first pitch sinker away, and when they get it, they get a good swing at it. Rick's got to keep the ball down. He's gotten a couple of ground balls today. He's got to battle him. He doesn't have his best stuff this afternoon. Pop, Boa backing up, still backpedaling. Denier coming in behind, yells him off. They almost collide. And on a slippery outfield, that was doubly dangerous. Bobby held on. It's Bobby's play to call because he is facing it. Larry finally gives way right at the end. Good communication. This could have been a disaster. Fortunately, a collision is avoided, and Dernier makes the play. Now here is Van Slyke. Good-looking, talented player. Andy Van Slyke looks at a strike. Joe Salgado in attendance today and choosing this as the place to celebrate his 29th birthday. A ball, one and one. A group of 53 here today from the University of Illinois Medical Center. down the right side. One ball, two strikes. There's nobody on, one down. If it's dark at home on your picture, don't adjust it. It's very dark here at the ballpark. And you know Arnie would be doing all he could if there was a dial to twist. You know how he checks the color usually when we're home after a trip. You know some of those lovely shots that he takes to just see if the cameras are all working. Yeah, one like that for the multicolored that tests every facet of our fine equipment here. But it didn't help lighten up the place. Three balls, two strikes. Rick Russell working. Lined it foul down the left side up above the bullpen. Well, it'll be lit up here tomorrow with a 12.50 start. Note that's a change in time, 12.50. Because 650 dentists are going to be here. The Dental Society. 
smiling all over the place. Swing and a foul. Our good friend Ed Bonk out in Park Ridge called us this morning, said, we're bringing a group. I says, how many? He says, about 650. Do another payoff to Van Slyke, McGee on deck. Fouled again down the left side, kicks off the railing down in front of the photographers and third base umpire Jerry Crawford will chase it down. So Rick Russell who saw a four run lead fade into a one run lead in the last inning. Fouled over here to the left again out of play. And it's still three and two. The pitcher that the Cardinals received for Ken Obert fell, Ken Daly. It's a man that Whitey Herzog thinks can really help him. You don't find left-handed starters too often. He thinks that somewhere down the road he's going to be a valuable pitcher. Looping liner, left field base hit. Matthews plays it on the first bounce. Van Slyke has his first hit. The Cardinals have their seventh. They've out hit the Cubs seven to four. Willie McGee, who started the three-run inning in the fourth with a double, is one for two. Sits safely in eight out of his last ten games. Popped away from Jody, but no harm. Van Slyke looking right at it, says, no sense me breaking off here. And it's one ball, no strikes. Starting to rain, evidently, if you can gauge from the way the crowd is reacting. Ball game is in the fifth inning. Cubs leading by a run. Missing with that sinker. Two balls, no strikes. Get the good look at Van Slyke as if you were viewing this game from the third base dugout. Chased him back but doesn't get him. Rich Bordy is in the bullpen again for the Cubs. Rushel, long hesitation. Runner going. The throw will be in. Me. Ball is saying, I got him. Second base umpire Joe West gave it palms down, and that's going to bring Jim Fry out of the dugout. Let's take another look. Larry just gave him the flick tag, and Joe, Jim, Joe West says, nope, you didn't get him. You missed him. Let's take a look. Jody throws the ball over to the first base side a second. The ball is there in time. Larry just doesn't go down to get him because he had the ball and he missed him by a good inch. No argument there by Jim Fry and Larry really didn't argue too much. And of course in that case Fry is really coming out to back up Boa who beefed a little because the dugout for that play you can't see it. But he's got to back up Boa who did put up a mild argument. Willie McGee with a two ball one strike count. Ball three. And the best hitter I think on their club with men on is on deck and that's Porter. Three balls and a strike. Steve Wright gets three and two. Tying run is in scoring position with one out. Boa gave that tag a little Matador style. 3-2. Oh, he got him. Big strikeout for Russia. Third strikeout for Rick. All in the last two innings, and it'll bring up Porter. Well, the play at second really hurts, Milo. First of all, Jody made an excellent throw and got it down there in a hurry. And now, Russell, who would have been out of this inning, has to face their best RBI man, a tough left-hand hitter and one of the best clutch hitters in the National League. He gets the hits when they really hurt you. He drove in their first run in the fourth inning and then they scored their second. One ball, no strikes. Porter a 265 hitter, but that is so deceptive. And the strike evens it, one and one. Starting time tomorrow is 12.50, and Arnie, you don't we don't come back until uh, Sunday and that'll be a one o'clock leadoff man radio only tomorrow. That's a strike one and two.
One ball and two strikes. Porter's going to be looking for that sinker away in this situation. With two strikes, he'll shorten up on the bat just a little bit and try to poke the ball out into left center field. There is some room for him as Bob Dernier is playing him straight away. Gary Matthews is deep and straight away and left. Van Slyke representing a tying run. You saw him with a big lead at second. Here's the one two and it's two and two. A rush will really put something extra on that. In fact so much that he tumbled a little coming off the mound. Good thing the ball wasn't hit back to him. He would not have been in a position to have fielded it. Two balls two strikes two down. Strike three called and Porter's going to beef with Davidson. Two strikeouts in a row after the tying runner had gotten into scoring position. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We're halfway through this one. Middle of the fifth and after four and a half. Cubs four runs with only four hits. The Cardinals have three runs on seven hits. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, we want to tell our viewers that there is a tornado warning in the Chicagoland area. So just keep watching your screen and there will be a graphic description of what's going on and what to watch for in regard to the tornado warning in the Chicagoland area. Here's Rick Reschel. Some umbrellas have popped up. Just a pesky little drizzle not enough to really move anybody. Russell lined hard to center in the second inning. Foul back strike one. Lottie showed him a little respect by starting him off with a slider on the outside corner. Well I think after the way uh, Russell hit that high pitch to him the last time up he said hey he swings that bat. Strike two. Sandberg with two hits, Moreland with a three run homer, and the Cubs are leading four to three. Threw it away. One ball, two strikes. After Russell, you go to the top with Denier and Sandberg. If a pitcher ever looks for a pitch, Rick should look for that slider low and away here. Give up the inside corner and reach out there and get it. He got it up higher and he wanted it, and Rick pops it right side. Jorgensen comes back into the edge of the grass, makes the play. Jorgensen is a good guy to have on a club. He can play a lot of places. He's a slick fielding first baseman, and he's not a bad bat to come off the bench. They made a pretty good deal because they got a pitcher who they think can help them, a left-handed starter, and Jorgensen for Ken Obertfell, and they opened a hole in their infield for Andy Van Slyke. Fly ball right field. Green will back up a step or two, and Denier is out, and it's two down. So Lottie has retired five in a row since coming out of their pen. This was the brightest that Wrigley Field has been for about an hour and a half. There was a lightning bolt that just kind of exploded over the field. There's the thunder to go with it. Either that or they're bowling upstairs. In the upper deck? Strike to Sandberg. We'd like to thank very much Len Zeem and the Chicago Sun Times for printing the list of stations and frequencies for the Chicago Cubs radio network in today's paper. That's foul back into the backstop. The list will assist those of you who want to pick up the Cubs games during their travels. That was a very nice service by Len Zeem and the Chicago Sun Times. One ball, two strikes. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Sandberg with a double and a single and a stolen base and a run score. Well, you go back to last night with four for five and two here today. He's been busy. That could be another one, and it is. It goes past the left fielder, kicks away from him again, and Sandberg has another two base hit. Holy Toledo is right on. 
His average was dropping precariously close to 300, but now it's up over 320 as he pounds the ball into the left center field gap. It gets by Mark Salas, then gets by him a second time. And Sandberg is in at second base. Second double of the day. Seven hits in his last eight trips to the plate. Here's the sire. Joe for two, drove in a run with a bounce to short in the opening inning. Had a good rip, but fouled it down the right side. Strike one. That's the first hit off Lottie. It's the fifth Cub hit of the day, and Sandberg has three of the five. What's that, a double hat shot, Ernie? <laughs> no balls and a strike. Cubs leading by a run as they bat in the fifth inning. Fouled it off again, got him down in the count 0 and 2. Cardinals are here tomorrow, 1250, then 120 on Sunday. Pirates invade on Monday to start a four-game series that includes a Tuesday doubleheader. Sandberg second. 0-2 count. Strike called. Side retire. First strikeout for Lottie. No runs, one hit, no errors. Sandberg left. We played through five. Cubs still lead it. Four to three. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. <laughs> if you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. <laughs> so if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Hey, give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Oh, uh, no, Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. It's a wild place. First pitch here to Jorgensen sends it down the left field line and it bends off foul down the left side. Take another look. Matthews gives it the long run. Fortunately, it twists foul. And the rain is starting to come down rather briskly here at Wrigley Field. Inning number six. Rick Russell's gone all the way so far against Stuper and Lottie. Pitching with a one run lead. A ball and a strike. Jorgensen has walked, and he's been thrown out by Russell. Salas on deck, then it'll be green. 1-1. One, one. High pop left side, Boa out, Matthews over. Matthews play to make, and he does. Looking right up into that rain and hangs on. Russell made two very good pitches last inning. Two inside corner fastballs to both McGee and Porter to get himself off the hook. So with guys looking for sinkers away, he came inside and struck them both out. Mark Salas drove in a run in the fourth, their second run, later scored their third, and a strike, 0-1. He's one for two today. David Green is on deck. Cardinals batting in the sixth inning. Right at Sandberg, picks it clean and got him, it's two away. The Golden Glove second baseman right there. And right now he's swinging a golden bat to go with it. David Green has singled and struck out swinging. Probably one of the best natural athletes on their club. A lot of ability. Sliced foul down the right side. Thank goodness. That would have kicked down into the corner. He'd still be running. And that's going to put Neil Allen to work, I think, in their bullpen. Despite the fact that Green is a big man, he can really fly. There you take a look at Neil Allen and Glenn Brummer. Just in case they get down into the spot that now is occupied by Jeff Lottie, Whitey Herzog wants to have somebody ready. Here's the 0-1 to Green. Right down the middle. Cubs got four in the first. The big blow was a three-run homer by Moreland. They led four to nothing after that inning. Cardinals got three in the fourth. He went after it. And that's another strikeout. 
Strikeout number five for Reichel. So he gets them one, two, three. We are in the middle of the sixth, hanging on for dear life. Cubs four, Redbirds three. <laughs> Robert Murphy's loose. But you can catch him every morning on Q101. We are in the bottom of the sixth. Milo Hamilton with Steve Stone. It's good to have you with us. Great to be back in Wrigley Field, and we're here for seven games, three with the Cardinals, four with the Pirates. Durham has walked, scored a run, and bounced out to first. Base hit, left center. LeBull usually gets hot when he gets home. Let's hope that'll be the story for him here because two big series on this homestand. It'd also be nice to score a run off of Jeff Lottie. He's thrown so very well against us in relief. Right now he's got a lot of confidence and also an insurance run at this point of the game wouldn't hurt at all. Here is Marlin. Three run homer. Got it up in the wind in the first inning and went into the left center field bleachers. Like a pitch out. Moreland taking a look at his third base coach as you see Durham take his lead. Cubs now with six hits. The Cardinals have seven hits. Runner going. Fouled off. And you see Durham trying to find that ball because <laughs> he was down to second. And in case that ball was going to be playable by either Porter or Jorgensen, he don't want to be standing around second, hopelessly doubled up. He's Watch also, his reaction. He's also going to get no help from Tommy Herr. You can bet on that. And right now, John Vukovic is screaming, get back here. Lottie moves him back at first base. Moreland looked down to Don Zimmer. I don't think they would hit and run on this pitch, perhaps waiting for the next one, but you never know. Let's see what happens. A ball. Tom Cornelis, who's too good looking to be a sports announcer. But after seeing him walk in with two of the girls from WQAD and Moline, I can understand a lot of things now. Three balls and a strike. And now you are looking at a situation where Leon Durham just might get the green light. If Moreland concentrates, he can take that ball to the right side if it's in the strike zone. So take an eye on Leon Durham at first. That's Moreland's natural stroke right. Runner going. Fouled back. Porter will take a look. But it's not playable. We're on the network today, Tom. I guess you've got us on out in the Quad Cities. Yes, we do, Milo. It's been a great, uh, great relationship, and the uh, Quad City Cubs are trying to get back in the ball game. They've lost eight straight, but you know, Gabby Crow's trying to get it back together. Oh, there you are. See? Yeah. We, we, we put your. You know, we got Quad around. City Day coming up on Sunday. They sent me up to do a little advance work. You know. I, I can see that you've been doing some advance work. Yes, sir. Well, you know you got one great fan out there, my mother-in-law. She's a great lady. There's a drive back in the center, but it won't carry now. McGee back, and he has it. Tom came over one year to graciously interview me for his show, and he got some of that good German home cooking while he was over there. Anybody at Quad Cities that looks like a prospect? Well, they got a lot of young players, Milo. I don't think uh, there's really anyone that's going to make an immediate impact. Uh, most of our players have been there a couple years. You know, we had Henry Cotto there for a few years. Uh, you're seeing now, and uh, Jimmy Boudreau a couple years ago, and they're all in Double A, so they're they paid their dues. And uh, you know, Larry Cox doing a great job there, but he's got a lot of young kids to work with. Of course, Dunstan and Woods were there. That's right. We've had a lot of players. Mel Hall at one time. Right. All right, Tom. Good to see you. Davis and that's ball one and in fact uh, Tom who does a lot of the sports work out around the Quad Cities something happens of interest in our area usually sends us a feed for our Channel 9 sports shows 
Two balls, no strikes to Jody, who is 0 for 2 today. Two balls, no strikes. There's a drag. the type of insurance you can use a two run homer RBI's number 48 and 49 and home run number 11 for Jody Davis that puts him one behind Leon Durham who leads the club a happy Jody Davis and the fans are on their feet here at Wrigley and another hundred dollars for Cubs care from the folks at true value and it's six to three and Stoney you got your wish you were hoping to see him do something with Lottie here well, he got a 2-0 fastball eye high to Jody Davis, and he deposited it against the back screen. That one went out of here like a rocket. Big swing by the Penguin. He was trying to make it back-to-back -back with that cut. That home run seems to have made it a little bit lighter here, Milo. Oh, it did brighten it up. You're right. Cubs have not hit a lot of home runs against the Cardinals. That's only their third. Hebner had the only one coming into today. And that won a game at Bush Memorial. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, Jody putting on the gear. He's glad to put it back on when you hit that dinger. Getting ready to switch from offense to defense. Now he's got to go out and call the good pitches for Rick Russell. Tom says uh, Jack Pulford and all the gang at Greenbrier watch our games every day. And a ball to the Penguin. Let's watch Jody's home run and enjoy it a couple more times. There you see the pitch. It's right up in his eyes. He hits it right on the line. Mark Salas runs out of room. Now if you're in center field, this is what it looks like. Almost knocked a hole in that screen. Mike Rourke is coming out. Now he wants to have a word with Lottie with one out here in the sixth. And Neil Allen has gone to work for the second time. He would like to see Lottie get out of this inning so they could pinch hit for him in the top of the seventh. He doesn't want to have to make the switch now because then he'd have to flip flop in the order. And when you talk about Quad City area, the Rock Island Argus, Murray Hurt, veteran sports writer, and I guess as big a Cub fan as there is. There's a line drive hit into right center field. Boa spanks one, and we got two on, and Russell will bat. With only one out, two on, two runs in on the long home run by Jody Davis. Now the Cubs have eight hits. Despite the fact that Rick Russell is a good hitter, I expect him to lay this one down and try to make Andy Van Slyke field it at third base. He probably will have the option, though, if everybody is charging. Jorgensen and Van Slyke get too close. Perhaps he can pull the bat back and just slap it in the infield. Let's see how they defense this. All right, be ready here. Bunch it up in the air, but it comes over foul. Had that been fair, that would have dropped behind Van Slyke. Sometimes that's not a bad play if you can bunt it hard and try to push it over the head of the infield, but to run the risk of a double play with both runners in motion. Van Slyke is playing him awfully tight at third base. This might be a good time to turn the big fella loose and let him take a swing at one because there's really everyone out of position in the infield. You know who was the best I think I ever saw at that uh, for a pitcher was Phil Necro. No balls and a strike. Boy, he did, but he got it right back to the mound. Throw to start. Flip it. The acrobat on the trampoline flipped it right over the oncoming runner. That is a 1-6-3 double play. 
as the Cardinals make their 77th double play of the year. But two runs are in as you watch the double play again. Two runs and a two run homer by Jody. Three hits in the inning, a walk, one man left. And after six innings at Wrigley Field, the Cubs are leading now six to three. The Midas Touch Award is brought to you by your 60 local Midas muffler and brake shops. There's Jody Davis who hit that two run homer. That's how he's getting ready to catch and here's the way he swings that pitch was up and boy he got it all and lined it out of here and the award for this home run will be a donation to the Children's Memorial Hospital in Jody Davis's name. Harry Carey and Steve Stone as we go on to the top of the seven the skies are beginning to clear the rain has stopped the Cubs are leading six to three. Ozzie Smith takes a strike and the count is one and two. Boy I really used a lot of the Jody Davis lines. Last inning in radio here's the pitch. Bouncing ball. Come on Larry charge you hurry up the throw. Got him on a close play. Larry Boa throws out Ozzie Smith. Watch this again. It's a bang bang play. Ozzie pounds it straight down into the ground. Larry comes over. Fires the first. Close play. Good call by Doug Harvey. Bang bang is right. We're going to see. A, here's Lonnie Smith coming out. Lonnie Smith's going to be the pinch hitter here. Lonnie hitting 270 for the year. Four homers. 19 RBI. There's a curve outside. Jody, Jody Davis. Hit one into the bleacher bums. Well, that wasn't so good. <laughs> Here's a pitch swung on. Say can reach it. Boa can throws. And they get him. He's out. Nice play. And boy, the bull, Leon Durham, really helped on that one, too. This looks like it might have just tipped off the glove of Ron Say. Let's watch him going to his left. No, it hops over it. Larry's there, makes the throw. Retiring Lonnie. So the Smith brothers go down one, two in the seventh. Here's Tommy Hur now. Two out, nobody on. Rick Russell seems to have settled on after a bad fourth inning. Hur is one out of three today. There's a strike at the knees. The guy wired one in from New Orleans. That had to cost a penny or two. DS West. New Orleans. Now the pitch. Here it is. A little bit low. Jody, Jody Davis, catcher extraordinaire. He paid to send you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the pitch a little bit low. I know you're jealous of a good singing <laughs> voice. Jody, Jody Davis, hit some high end for. Jody, Jody Davis, he's a home run star. Here's the pitch. Swung on, this is going to be an easy inning. Sandberg's got it over to first to retire the side. One, two, three, nothing across. We go down to the bottom of the seventh to score. Cubs six, Cardinals three.
to the bottom of the seven, and here's Bobby Dernier leading it off. Ken Daly acquired from the Atlanta Braves in the deal for Oberfeld is the new pitcher, Steve. Daly started the only game he pitched for St. Louis. He didn't fare very well, only going two and a third innings, giving seven hits and five earned runs. Totally this year, he's 0-4 with a 686 earned run average, so he's had his problems. There's Bobby Dernier, one out of three so far today to lead it off. He bumps by the mound. He's got a chance to be it runs in the short right field. He bunted the ball by Tommy Herr. He was trying to push it by the mound, and he succeeded. Watch this. You can have bunted a double on this one. He has ideas about going for two, but then Herr gets to the ball. Herr kept his eye on Dernier all the way. But Dernier gets his second base hit of the day. A good idea with a bunt. And here is Sandberg, three out of three today, seven out of his last eight, hotter than a firecracker. Skies are clearing. It's become a lovely afternoon. And more of the same tomorrow. The game will start tomorrow at 12.50. Remember that unusual starting time because of the uh, network coverage, which preempts Channel 9 as it so frequently does on Saturday. One ball, no strikes. There's a fastball in there, a strike off. I think they wrote it into the baseball contract so Steve could go to Lake Geneva tomorrow. Call my good friends, the Jack Barrys in Fontana, and tell them I'm still alive, will you? Okay, no problem, Harry. You know I hate to miss a day, but it's for a good cause. Here's a speck. Yeah, your vacation. <laughs> I, I wish we could charge admission for this booth. You know, we can make some money. I never saw so many people come in and out of here. I don't know if it includes what they get in the booth and the pay the tenants, Arnie. One ball, two strikes. Sandberg swings a high drive in the right field, coming over towards the foul line and making the catch is Dave Green. So Sandberg flies out to Green. Don't worry, Rhino, nobody ever hit every time. <laughs> Last year, Daly split his time between Richmond and AAA for the Braves and Atlanta. He was a starter most of the time. He started 30 games out of the 38 that he worked. So they looked to him eventually to find a place in the starting rotation over here. Here's Gary Matthews now, 0 for 3 today, but drove in a run. I want to tell you something about the run, too. There goes the runner, swung, and he fouled it back and out of play. Boy, Dernier had a wonderful break. He would have stolen second easily. You know, if the game goes on and the Cubs win it, 6 to 3, let's say, the current score, the game-winning RBI will be credited to Gary Matthews, who drove in the first run with an infield out. The three-run homer of Moreland's and the two-run homer of Jody Davis is just like a day at the beach. Nothing. That's how silly that rule is. Yet when they go into arbitration, teams will use that against the player and the player will use that against the team to get more money or less money, as the case might be. There's a base hit on the left for Matthew. Runners at first and second. One out. And here's Durham. He's one out of two today. Ball game in the seventh. Daly's got a slow breaking ball, and that one hung up a little bit to the Sarge. Turned into a fine afternoon here. It's light. The sun seems to want to break through the clouds. Well, all those weathermen said that it would clear. One out, runners at first and second. Leon Durham, who started that sixth inning with a base hit, climaxed by Jody Davis's home run. Good fastball. Ken Daly, a left-hander, tall and slim. Now's the pitch for Leon to look for a breaking ball. Daly has snuck ahead with the fastball. With one strike, he probably will try to throw that curveball. If the bull stays in there, he can get a pretty good swing at one. Now ready. 
Low fastball, and that evens the count of ball and a strike. One man out. Runners at first and second. They're near a safe lead. Low outside ball two. They're near. It's not beyond stealing third base. It's kind of tough when the left-hand hitter up there, the catcher facing the, the play, having an unencumbered throw. Two balls and a strike. Curveball inside, ball three. And uh, Daryl Porter calls time. Wants to talk to Daly. Crowd about 35,000, I guess. He wants to give the bullpen a chance to get loose. It looks like Dave Von Olin, who's going to go out there and throw for St. Louis. Also, he wants to tell him to keep an eye on Bob Dernier at second base. He hasn't been paying close attention to him, and Dernier, who likes to steal third as much as he does second, might be thinking about getting a good jump. Three balls and the strike. Dernier takes a look around. Ozzie Smith is lined up with him. Good fastball at the knee, and the count is full. And they may not start the runner. Durham doesn't hit into too many double plays, but he does strike out quite a bit. So let's see how they elect to do it. Three balls, two strikes. The runner. Hold. Well, he did throw the ball. He whirled around as if to pick off Dernier, who broke for second. Three balls, two strikes. Ground ball headed for right field, the base hit. Here comes Dernier. Nobody will throw him out. And it's another run in for the Chicago Cup. And that for Durham is 52nd run down it in this year. There's nothing like the friendly confines to get that average of Leon Durham up. He drives the ball through the right side. A 3-2 fastball. Dernier scores easily. That's the second run scored for Bob Dernier today. When he gets on, he scores. Durham is leading the National League and runs about him in. He's got two more than uh, Gary Carter of Montreal and Mike Schmidt of the Phillies, each of whom has 50. Leon now is 52. Here's Moreland. It is Dave Van, Van Olen in the in bullpen. bullpen yeah. Now the pitch. Swung, a double play ball. Steps on third, throws to first, the inning is over. Van Slyke took Moreland's easy eye offers, stepped on third and fired to first for the double play. But one run for the Cubs, three hits, no errors, one left. At the end of seven, it's the Cubs seven, the Cardinals three. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Gary Woods comes in to play left field for the Chicago Cubs, and Keith Molins called time. The uh, mascot, the bat boy, brings out sunglasses. Pick him up as he trots off. Let's get the little bat boy, um, Arnie. There he is. Who is that? Is that Ron Sage boy, Danny? No. I don't think so. Jim Fry had a meeting before the game today. He closed the clubhouse doors and started to remind some of the guys about what they were not doing. It's pretty much a confidence meeting, trying to get them back to the basics, try to get them to be a little more aggressive. It seems to have worked. Here's a pitch swung on by Van Slyke. You know, I mentioned earlier about how Le Lamar Vernon, the ticket sale director of the Cubs, mentioned how there are always seats available here at Wrigley Field. Well, everybody talking about unable to get a seat for the ball game. 
today or for the entire series. Only 33,723 today. We had crowds as big as 41,000 here. But that scare of the sellout invariably keeps people away. Van Slag fouls it off. Van Slag is one out of three. Russell has come down since that fourth inning. Only one base hit. That by Van Slyk in the fifth. Other than that, he hasn't walked anybody since the second inning. Russell seemed to hit his groove in the fifth inning. There's a pitch swung on. Ground ball. Look at Durham. Nice play. And Russell is there for the throw. Boy, there's a major league play by a first baseman right there. The bull had to come overhand, and when you do throw overhand, much like underhand, you've got to lead the pitcher. But you also have to make the throw with authority, and the bull gets something on it, getting to Russell in time. The bull just keeps looking better and better at first base. Vivian Pontius here with the group from Geneva, Indiana. They're here from everywhere today but nowhere near a full house. One out, nobody on. Willie McGee, who doubled his start their three-run fourth. He's one out of three today. A little bit outside. Two balls, no strike. Ball game started at three. Almost five. Here's a bouncing ball up the middle base hit. McGee bounces a single to center. Cubs are out in front, seven to three. Boy, what a pairing of pitchers Sunday. Joaquin Andahar for the Cardinal. And Rick Sutcliffe for the Cubs. Before the game, Joaquin said that he thought he'd make the all-star team in 82 and he was a little bitter when he wasn't selected and he said he really doesn't care if he makes the all-star team he's go he'll go if he's selected but it's not as big a deal for him he's been there twice and he's still bitter over 1982 one out one on Lee Smith is limbering up let's pause for station identification This is WGN Television, Channel 9, Chicago. Rick Russell with Willie McGee, a good lead. Daryl Porter's one out of three today. There's a pitch a little bit outside. The Cardinals have had eight hits. And here comes, uh, let's see now, Jim Fry is walking out there. He doesn't want Russell to get in any trouble. Now, Russell has not gone into the eighth inning too many times this year. He threw a complete game against the Astros where he threw eight innings. But he wants to ask him how he's feeling. He's got to win this ball game. He realizes that, and he doesn't want it to get out of hand. But he's also got to kill some time and allow Lee Smith to get ready. So Jim Fry right now is killing that time. He's going to let Russell stay out there. But if he gives up another hit or so, he's going to be out of there and they're going to turn it over to the big guy. All right, here we go. Last ball on the outside corner. Porter most unhappy with the call. He's beside himself. He's had a tough time agreeing with Bob Davidson all day. Well, he's called the ball inside on Porter. Now he calls it outside on Porter, and he is still complaining. If he tries to pull the ball by leaning out over the outside corner, he's a pretty good candidate for a double play. So if he can get him to hit the ball on the ground, Rick could be out of this one. One ball, one strike. One on, one out in the eighth. Low one outside. You know, mentioning Bob Davidson working the plate reminds me that remember when we were in Houston, Satch Davidson became ill. Later on, 
had a bypass. I think it was a quadruple bypass. And I understand he's really coming along with leaps and bounds. And maybe he's watching the game down in his home in Houston, Texas. If so, we certainly want to send along our best regards and wishes for a speedy return to duty. Satch Davidson, fine National League umpire. Three balls and a strike. There goes the runner. High pop foul back. Willie McGee was breaking. And now the count is three and two. And even four runs down, McGee had to be going to stay out of the double play. Now, so you can look at the philosophy of Whitey Herzog. They don't hit many home runs, and he has to run at every opportunity. 3-2 pitch. Backs off the rubber. There goes the runner. Ball four is low. And that puts, that's going to be all now for Russell. He went seven in the third inning. He allowed eight hits. He leaves with a 7-3 lead. The only decision he can get would be a victory, which would be his fourth of the year. And Lee Smith is going to come on in relief. Lee with 13 saves to his credit. We'll be back following this message. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Lee Smith finishing up his warm-up tosses. Steve, he, uh, he's had an up-and-down checkered career this year. Well, he has, Harry, but he does have 13 saves. That puts him among the league leaders. The earned run average is up a little bit, 373, making his 30th appearance. He's given up five home runs. He struggled with his control in Pittsburgh, walking three men in the ninth inning, but he got the big outs when he had to. Retiring Bill Madlock with the bases loaded in the ninth inning to record his 13th save. He's got Cardinals at first and second. There's one out here in the eighth. He's got a tough left-hand hitting combination coming up in Jorgensen and Salas. So Lee's got his work cut out for him. He would like to record save number 14 and save this one for Russell. That would put him at four and three. You know, our uh, radio outlet, WGN Radio, which will do the game even though the television station is preempted tom uh, tomorrow as a contest going on where they if you have one of their WGN radio bumper stickers on and if your number license number is called you you can win a trip to Los Angeles for the Olympics the first winner was announced today Harry Barton of West Pensacola Street in Chicago so congratulations to him You'll win a trip for two to the Olympics. Mike Jorgensen takes a strike. A bullet on the outside corner. I talked to Marvell Wynn after that performance in Pittsburgh. I said, anything wrong with Lee Smith's fastball? He goes, there's nothing wrong with it. It looked about 95 miles an hour to me. Here's the pitch. A little bit low on outside. I really do believe, Steve, that the relief pitcher needs steady work, and when you go four, five, six days sometimes without getting in a ball game, it even it hurts you more even than being used too much. One-one delivery, swung and he missed the fastball. The Cardinals are here tomorrow for a 12:50 game for a regularly timed 1:20 game Sunday, and then the Pirates open a four-game series Monday with a 305 game Monday and a double header starting at noon Tuesday. Here's the pitch. Strike him out. That was a good slider by Lee Smith who took a little bit off and Jorgensen was looking fastball all the way. Let's watch it. He completely fools him. For Lee to be effective, he cannot just stand out there and throw that fastball. He's got to throw something else. That's been the problem with Tim Stoddard also. And Lee showed you right there that he has some confidence in that slider, and he threw a good one. So that's a big second out. And here now is the rookie, Mark Salas. Stry, that's the foul tipped, I believe. That and one got a piece of Jody Davis. He tried to check his swing, and the ball ticked his bat. Monday's game, the series opener with the Pirates, starting at 
is also True Value Hardware's salute to Champions Day. Pat Summerall will be on hand to throw out the first ball and act as master of ceremonies as the Illinois high school students are saluted for their outstanding achievement. Oh, and one the count. Good slider at the knee. Looks like he took a little something off on it. At 2.30 Monday, a home run hitting contest. The process of finding the home run hitting contest champ will continue. Hey, struck him on. How's that for relieving? Comes in with two men on, two left-hand hitters come in in a row, and he promptly strikes them both out. One, two, swinging. No run. One hit. No air. Two left. We go into the bottom of the eighth. It's all Cubs so far. Seven to three. Harry Carey and Steve Stone as we... Go down to the bottom of the eighth. The Cubs are out in front by the score of seven to three. Jody Davis, who provided this crowd with one of its biggest thrills, a line drive home run in the seventh of Jeff Roddy, will lead it off. Davis now with 11 homers, 49 runs batted in. Ken Daly on the hill. The left-hander getting ready. Curve of beauty of strike off. All the information about the tornado warnings will be given to you right here on Channel 9. So just keep the ball game on and you'll be informed right up to the moment. All and two the count. Ball game in the eighth. The pitch. Fastball high. The Phillies are playing a doubleheader at Pittsburgh tonight. And Montreal is playing at New York. Gooden is going for the Mets. Bob Hillman of Cincinnati who replaces Bill Frink on the 9 o'clock news on Channel 9 starting Monday night co covering the game of Dan Rowan of Channel 9 Sports. Three balls, two strikes on Jody Davis. Porter can't believe it. He's just Standing up there, he thought that was strike three. Oh, Porter went argue with a plate umpire. Swung and he fouled it back, and the crowd is starts that Jody Jody chant. The Cubs, pending the outcome of tonight's baseball by winning today, will be only two games back. Three balls, two strikes. He walked him ball four. Significant change in the lineup today. Jody Davis moved up to the sixth spot ahead of Ron Say, and it certainly paid dividends in the sixth inning when he hit a two-run home run. So Ron Say, who's been struggling a little bit with the average, has moved down a little bit, and Jody, who's provided consistent offense, has moved up. There's Say hitless in two trips, walked once. One ball, no strikes. Say has just fallen into a hitting slump. That's all that can be said. There's a pitch, pop foul back and out of play. Evens a count, a ball and a strike. Say is playing in his 57th consecutive airless game today. He's only seven away from the National League record held by Jimmy Davenport of the Giants, established 
back in 1967. One one pitch. Right in there a fastball. Well, the way this is going. It could very well be. That say will break that fielding record. In his own ballpark at Dodgers Stadium. Over the weekend. Next weekend. Home run number 10 for Ron Say. Getting the RBI total up to 40. Putting some more icing on the Cubs' cake. Watch it again. High fastball. That's what it was. See you later. There's Larry Boa now. 9-3 to three in favor of the Cubs. Ah, these many out-of-town people will be dancing in this. There's a base hit for Boa. Larry Boa punches a single to left. We're going to watch Say's home run from the center field camera. As soon as he hit it, he knew it was going. Here's Lee Smith now with a runner at first, nobody out. Nine to three. Cubs are pounding the Redbird. Good bunt. The only play, first base, Daryl Porter to Tommy Hur sacrifice. This takes a little of the pressure off for the Lee Smith save. He came in in a tight situation, threw three good sliders, struck out two hitters, and now he finds himself with a six-run lead. The tying run was on deck when uh, Lee Smith came in, wasn't he? So he'll qualify for the save. Bobby Dernier with two out of four today. Ball in there for a strike call, one out. Popped it up, short right, David Green coming in. Two gun, and here is Ryan Sandberg. Well, he had four out of five last night in Pittsburgh. Why not four out of five today in Chicago? He's three out of four right now. When the men at the top of the order for the Cubs hit, they put a lot of runs up on the board. Five hits between Dernier and Sandberg today, nine runs up on the board. Always a direct correlation. Ken Daly. Willowy left-hander. Curve strike call. Sandberg has raised his average to 322. He's had seven out of his last nine. Home run, doubles, triple, singles all included. High fly ball going deep, but it'll be caught. Green way back there grabs it. All right, two runs, two hits, no air, one left. At the end of eight, it's the Cubs, nine, the Cardinals, three. You know, a lot of people think I have the best seat in the house. No way. The best seat in the house is right here. Cheering on the Cubs with the greatest fans in the world and the greatest beer in the world, Budweiser. Yeah, nothing quenches a Cub fan's thirst for victory quite like the king of beer. Oh, now here comes another one. Cub fans, this bud's for you. 
Barry and Steve Stone, and we want to introduce you to the latest addition to WGN TV, and that's Bob Hillman, who starting Monday night will be seen with the sports on Channel 9. Congratulations. I know you're going to love Chicago, and I know you'll do a good job, Bob. Huh? Thanks very much, uh, Harry. It's nice to be out here at Wrigley Field on a day that's so great for the uh, Chicago Cubs, and I'm looking forward to working at GN with Dan Rohn and all the great people in the sports department. And I must say that I've been an admirer of yours and Steve Stone's for a long time and got you on the cable in Cincinnati and all around the country. Well, I tell you, you'll find much more life here at Wrigley Field than you did at Riverfront Stadium. Uh, I'll tell you, this is the greatest place in the world to watch a baseball game, and I'm looking forward to coming out here an awful lot. Good luck now. Thank you very much, Harry. Thank you, Steve. Bob Hillman, who's starting Monday night, will be seen on the 9 o'clock news covering sports for WGN and Channel 9. Hey, Marla Collins just scoops up the foul ball. It's the first time we've known this her today. One ball, one strike. David Green leading it off. Boy, that was a weak swing. There's darkness all around over the fences, but a little sun has poked through here at Wrigley Field. It's a lot sunnier with that 9-3 lead. Lee Smith going for save number 14. Rick Russell, his fourth victory of the year. There's a pitch low. John Stupers started this one for the Cardinals, and he'll be the loser. Two balls, two strikes. Hey, struck him out. He's face three, he's fan three. Another slider. Lee Smith seems to have kind of fallen in love with that pitch here today. And it's breaking well down and unhittable to this point. Well, across the score sheet for his work so far, he's faced three men. It's K, K, K. And here is Ozzy Smith. Watch Ozzy up at the plate. See if he's, watch his actions with the eye. He's doing the Joe Morgan deal. Fastball outside. Boy, you're very observant, Arnie. I'll say that. Strike. There's that slider again. That looks like he's changing speeds with it, too. Well, I think Billy Connors talked to him a little bit, and it looks like he's changed his pitching philosophy out here today. Did he go around? They're going to appeal. He checked his swing in time, they say. Two balls, two strikes. Now the skies are clearing again. 33,723. There are a lot of general admission seats available. The pit. Low outside, ball three. So don't let them scare you away with this talk about a sellout. Three balls, two strikes. He fouls it back, and Ozzy is still alive. Well, at about 524, this game's going to... Then they have the Budweiser concert. Judy Roberts in a band following the game. Ball, he walked him. Barely missed with his fastball. Art Howe is going to hit for Ken Daly. Art Howe, a third baseman, used to be with Houston. Howe will be the hitter. Following the game, about 20 minutes after the game is over, the Cubs are going to present the second in their sixth Budweiser WGN Radio Chicago Tribune post-game entertainment event. The music today will be provided by the Judy Roberts Band. And if you've lived in Chicago for any length of time, I know you've been subjected to her most enjoyable talent. 
One strike to nothing. High fly ball. Gary Woods in left field. Two gone. Here's the leadoff man, Tommy Hur. He started the ball game. About two hours and 21 minutes ago with a single to center. Things were rosy then for the Cardinals. They're not looking too good right here. The crowd alive. Hur takes the strike. Her is batting, and Lee Smith is pitching to him. Philadelphia, trailing Pittsburgh, three to nothing in the first inning. High pop foul. Out of play. Jason Thompson hit a homer for the Pirates in the bottom of the first inning. They're out in front of the Phillies, three to nothing. The crowd is on his feet now. Smith ready. The pet. He struck him out. The Cubs win. Tommy Herr went down swinging. In an inning and two thirds, Lee Smith fanned four men and he got them all swinging as the Cubs opened this week long homestand by knocking off the Cardinals in the first game, nine to three. We'll be back with the totals and the highlights in a moment. Harry Carey and Steve Stone were back at Wrigley Field, better than 33,000 paid here today. And they saw the Chicago Cubs that they had seen a little earlier in the season. It looks like the name of the game for the Cubs is long ball. And also, it's get back home. The Cubs snapped a four-game losing streak with a long ball here today. Gary Matthews gets his ninth game-winning RBI. Rick Russell does a nice job, and Lee Smith comes on with spectacular in relief. You know, you, uh, you can't uh, minimize the job that Rick Russell did. And also, the, to emphasize the great work of Lee Smith, because he's been struggling a little bit. And it looks as if maybe he has developed a... Uh, a new philosophy now. Maybe he's come to the point where uh, he knows that changing speeds a little bit, taking something off, is going to make him even better. If he has a good fastball, Harry, he can go out there and throw it. But it's been a little inconsistent. And seeing as he has to go out there in tough situations, he's got to throw the slider occasionally. He did today and struck out four in an inning and two-thirds. Well, have a good time in Lake Geneva tomorrow. And uh, you lucky stiff. I'm going to be working radio, and so I can't go. But uh, say hello to everybody up there, and we'll see you Sunday bright and early. Okay, Harry, bring him home tomorrow. Bye-bye right, now. Here are the totals quickly. Nine runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Chicago Cubs. Rick Russell is the winner. He now has won four and lost three. The save goes to Lee Smith, his 14th of the year. For the Cardinals, three runs, eight hits, and no errors. Their loser is John Stuper. He now has won two and lost five. Judy Roberts is going to entertain, and most of these people are going to hang on here for an hour or so of uh, music, danceable tunes, as only she can play them. Now with Steve Stone, Harry Carey, wishing you all a very pleasant good evening from Wrigley Field in Chicago, where the Cubs move to within two games of first place by walloping the Cardinals today 9-3. to three. Hope you enjoyed the telecast. I know you'll enjoy now a cold bottle of Budweiser. I know I will. So long, everybody. Our participating advertisers in Cubs baseball were Bud Light. The best has a taste all its own. Satisfying but never filling. Zenith and your Zenith dealers. 
At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Canon, the official 35 millimeter camera of the 1984 Olympics. Union 76 and your neighborhood Union 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1984. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. And by True Value, the more you've got to do, the more you need True Value hardware stores. We've got what it takes. Our next televised game will be between the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals Sunday. Our telecast will begin with a leadoff man at 1 o'clock. <laughs>